Welcome to VidZet, your home for careful consideration of our common concerns. I'm Dr. Ted Noel. I spend a fair amount of time scanning through political commentary from both sides of the aisle. It's difficult, but I even look at lefty blogs. Advil, please. And as I spend time with the dark side of the force, certain things become very clear. But if you aren't prepared, you'll let them pass unchallenged. Let's start with the entertainment provided by the broadcast media. Listen to F. Chuck Todd on Meet the Depressed this Sunday. You know, when, when he says things like low IQ about yeah. somebody, Maxine Waters, who... It's always with an African-American when he questions and, intelligence. He's always using it against an African-American. Hmm. So let's go to the nation's a newspaper of record, the New York Slimes. They keep a list of all of Donald Trump's Twitter insults, and it's a big list. And while we may cringe from time to time at these personal attacks, it's clear that a Trump Low IQ slam is not restricted to blacks. Chuck Todd is simply lying. While Maxine Waters really deserves the insult and happens to be black, Trump has also slammed a bunch of others. Mika Brzezinski of Morning Joe is, quote, dumb as a rock. Hillary Clinton is, quote, very stupid and, quote, very dumb. James Comey is not smart and very dumb. We could go on. Trump is not a racist. He's an equal opportunity offender. In advertising terms, this is called branding. Trump gives his opponents a derogatory brand name that sticks and depresses their brand. Remember Little Marco and Low Energy Jeb? Oh, yeah, those lines did their job. Next, we find Joe Lockhart, a former press secretary for President Clinton, saying, um, uh, it is, This has never happened before. We've had, um, you know, we've had great presidents, we've had terrible presidents, um, Republicans and Democrats, but we've never had anything like this where a president, we have a president who is incapable of telling the truth. Funny, wasn't his boss impeached and disbarred for, drumroll please, lying under oath? And did he forget that President Obama said, If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor, period. On 23 separate recorded public occasions. Or that Susan Rice declared, on five, count them, five separate Sunday news shows in one day that the attack that killed four Americans in Benghazi was due to a video no one had seen, or that President Obama falsely said in a debate with Mitt Romney that he had called the Benghazi attack terrorism the day after it happened. Right. I didn't think so. Then Dan Rather tweets, whenever I see President Trump rail against the fake news or call us the enemy of the people, I think, you can't handle the truth. You may not like it, but the press is protected by the Constitution. You know that document you swore to preserve, protect, and defend? Curious. Is this the same Dan Rather who tried to derail George W. Bush's re-election bid by broadcasting a totally fabricated story about the president's service in the Air National Guard on 60 Minutes? Yes, that's 60 Minutes. The program that slandered my detective medical work outlining Hillary Clinton's probable Parkinson's disease. They didn't cross-check that one either. I didn't get a single email, Facebook message, or phone call from them. But Sean Hannity's producer found my cell phone number and called me while I was with my wife in Costco. So much for the media. 
let's go a bit further. The Constitution, yeah, the Constitution does say that Congress shall pass no law abridging the freedom of the press. It does not say thou shalt not criticize the press when it lies about you. Think about that for a minute. The president is complaining about the type of lies I just laid out. Never has he ever said that CNN or the New York Times should be put out of business. They have a legal right to publish, but they do not have a legal right to publish lies. We have to be careful. A lie is an untruth that you know to be untrue. The legacy media, that's CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, the New York Slimes, and so on, make a habit of lying about the president. For example, when President Trump and Japanese Prime Minister Abe shared a Japanese tradition of feeding the koi, CNN deliberately edited the film to make it look like he was bored and simply dumped the fish food in the pond. It was a deliberate lie. Calling that out was proper, but CNN doesn't like being called fake news and complained. Publishing a lie is either libel or slander, depending on whether the lie is spoken or written. That's illegal, and CNN does it constantly. They get away with it because President Trump is a public figure, and that gives the media more protection. But if he really wanted to spend the effort, he could end up bankrupting CNN because of their lies. Oh, but the president plays 3D chess. And as a master strategist, he finds it's better to have fake news CNN and the failing New York Times out there as foils. When CNN happily lets former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick claim that ICE has sadistic policies and practices, it's just another lie from the fake news. The public is on to their game and discounts them. We must again consider the failing New York Times and its editorial writer, Chris Siliza. Quote, asked by Lemon, that's CNN's Don Lemon, whether life was harder as an African-American living during Trump's presidency, LeBron James responded, no, I think it's always been there. But I think the president in charge now has given people, they don't care now, they throw it in your face now. Close quote. Solissa claims that this, quote, insight shows that Trump's, quote, actions provide both cover for those who hold bigoted views and also serve as a sort of encouragement for these sorts of noxious views to be aired publicly, end quote. Wait a minute. When was the last time a conservative or Republican brought up race or did something overtly racist? Think hard. I'll give you a minute. All of the in-your-face actions come from, drum roll please, yep, the left. It's true that a couple lefty protesters have been beaten up after they first beat up peaceful conservatives. And when was the last time conservatives came to a public rally for the purpose of telling blacks to get back on the plantation? Charlotte? Sorry, the neo-Nazis are hard left. Watch Death of a Nation. Carefully listen to Dinesh D'Souza's interview with white supremacist Richard Spencer. Or look for it on YouTube, by the way. The leader of the Charlotte white supremacy rally openly declares himself to be a hard lefty. Combating these lies by the media is a constant job because every day we run into more of them. The left has no moral compass. Their only system of values is related to whether they can win by destroying all opposition. Translation, the left are thugs. America depends on one thing. 
the premise that you can invest yourself in making a better life and not have it stolen from you. That's the American dream, and it lives in a place called America. We must defend the American dream every day. The left exists to destroy America. When I say that, they'll yell louder, but it's true. And the truth is the tool we have to beat back this assault. Lies must be countered with the truth. CNN sucks because it lies. Ditto for PMS, NBC, and the New York Slimes. But we can overcome. We have no choice. Please like Vidzet on Facebook. Follow Vidzet on Twitter. And support Vidzet on Patreon. Until next time, I'm Dr. Ted Noel. Thanks for watching.